up, you beautiful bastards? Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. We have a fantastic Sunday community show for you today. We're gonna talk about the stories that mattered most to y'all this week, the reactions, the takeaways, all the fallout. But first, to get you a little back up to speed, I have our frustrated news recap correspondent, Zed Taban. What's up? No Zed? I hope y'all had a good vacation. Your uncle's still mad racist. In Twitter, still all haters who wish they Elon famous. Your family hate rap music. They like that new Kanye shit. I'm on your best friend playing. How was your weekend? Hey yo, this that fuck around and find out. Leave a vote and sign out. Hanging out in Georgia near the door where all the lines out. Over till it's over. Everybody hate the culture. You ain't being real enough, so I'm on hive now. Do better. Double check on that campaign. Teddy bears kind of look strange. Balenciaga parent gets advantage with a weird paint from a court case about what now? J Dolph gotta double down. Triple now. Saying he love Nazis. Who suits feel like some white sheets? Till GOP deletes tweets. So now it's not about free speech. Now Elon had some. Big beef with Apple on their store fees. He's even cracking down on a protest for zero COVID until he partially folded, exclaiming, Oh, bother. Here we go. They ought to know. This Mario. That's a go. What? A this shot. Nintendo. Your turn he closed. Or is it Panda? We fucking know. What's up, Alan? Nintendo cares about Super uh, Smash Bros. fans. Uh, Can we just have our freaking tournament? Hey, yo, please. Wait, wait, wait. Can we stop this? The word of the year is gaslighting. I sing for the community that you outprice. It. Like using the only license to get your brand climbing. All I know is the community works harder and events keep dying like Railroad is getting railroaded by house voting when talks broken and they might strike. Scared the economy might die from a rail closure. Spotify with Rogan and Oath Keepers just lost Odin. And Will Smith is so fucking sorry. We want the drama like Maury. No Jerry Jones in your questions, but POC tension. You look at your cinder. Y'all shoddy swap stories like what? I don't really get it, like they never get the message Walmart warned about the shooter, but they kept him on the ledge After everyone he threatened, just a thought to prayer statement And another bad lesson Is it bad times? Guitar killing to build a fucking sport live Texas better boil water or you might die Arizona got elections that ain't certified Before you get that lifeline, maybe there's a bright side Marriage equality passed in the Senate yeah. Cure for Alzheimer's, seeing some modest progression 50 mil for tribal land from Biden and Harris And Will Smith is so fucking sorry Check on the story, we back on the glory it's Philly D birthday, he say that he 40 But I don't believe him, it's cold out this season I'll buy him some sneakers to burn like these Yeezys I oh, they're for you Let's burn them through They'll smell like glue Zed, I missed you for that week Too soon My bad no, glad you're back where you need to be. Also, very cool news for those of you that like Zed Freestyle in the news. This week's track, as well as everything that came before, now available on Spotify and Apple in those links down below. I know y'all been asking for it, so now you have it. But with that said, let's just jump into Monday. And on Monday, I'll say we were very relieved. We didn't know how y'all were going to receive the, the Magic the Gathering piece we received. That's obviously a very niche. There's always a risk there, but we always think, like, if it's interesting, it can live. So it was awesome to see people both in the community and out of the community happy we spoke with the professor. Longtime Magic players also having plenty to say in the comments, especially about your own experiences at local game stores with comments like, as a player, I remember being so excited for the new sets to be released and planning new ways to play, going to your LGS and having a community there. Sadly, now LGSs are having to close and there's just so much product. You can't enjoy what you just bought because there's another set coming out and your cards are just worthless then. What was really interesting was the fact that many of these factors weren't just limited to magic. Right? Bruce Wayne here gave us an extremely detailed outline of how Hasbro was essentially killing their Marvel Legends game the exact same way. Oversaturation online over retail exclusive items that game stores can't get alongside picking and choosing which stores do actually get products, price gouging, quality issues, and a ton of other factors. It's a really interesting read, and I'll make it available as a Google Doc in the description below. And you had others pointing out that everything from makeup to bookstores are also in the same boat. Also, another big topic were people sharing their Black Friday experiences, which, by the way, the last of the Beautiful Bastard Mystery Drop sale where stuff's like 50% off. That should be done by today. So get on on that, get a present for yourself. But regarding Black Friday, you had Kara making a great point about how inflation actually affects buying habits, saying, every year we get my husband a new pair of Converse shoes to replace his old ones. On Black Friday, the shoes are always 45 to 50. This year, the sale price was $60, so we didn't get any extra. Inflation makes it so those last minute thoughts of I'll grab two or adding a few extras to the cart doesn't happen. If stores want to see turnout, they need to offer us good deals. While others are on the opposite side of the equation, right? The, the workers on Black Friday say, I've worked retail Black Friday five years now. I can say this one was so easy, it didn't even feel like Black Friday. And I noticed a couple things different this year. One, no door busters like companies used to have. I couldn't find anything good. My friends who work retail as well had nobody lined up in the morning. Two, deals weren't that great. Seriously, not many places had that many good deals. Three, inflation 
inflation caused the prices to go up so high that the, quote, deal was the normal price two to three months ago. And the combination of people not having money, myself included, and the fact that prices were still up there made me, and I feel like many others, just not even bother this year. And to end Monday, you had people speaking on the uh, Balenciaga scandal that got that video suppressed by YouTube. So I'm gonna try to be careful how we talk about it. Y'all were saying things like, the whole Balenciaga thing is insane to me because this had to go through multiple people before it was published online, and not one of them went, hey, this might get us sued. And then Tuesday uh, was wild. I'm also glad to see that uh, despite all the bad news, uh, all of you aren't completely jaded and numb. And that Melissa's story and your reaction to it, I think really proved that. But of course, the biggest story was the rail strike where nearly everyone was supporting the rail workers with comments like, if a group is so necessary that them deciding to strike would essentially destroy the economy, maybe they should be allowed to have sick leave and vacation days. And the fact that these railroad companies won't give people paid sick leave and weekends to avoid an economic catastrophe is wild to me. While others were just wondering why the rules seem so stacked against them. On the rail strike, why the hell is the nuclear option to force the rail workers back to their shifts and not force the rail companies to meet demands? Like those attendance policies and sick day restrictions effectively force you to be on call and ready to work whenever. And if I can interject here, uh, the answer is capitalism. And don't get it confused, I'm not a socialist Sandy. But yeah, my experience as I look out into what I see today and looking back is that uh, capitalism doesn't work unless people get fucked. Also, do not confuse that with me saying, yay, that is just me describing the situation at hand. I mean, it's literally why you have people saying the economy is going to stay fucked unless more people get fired, right? The fact that that is the conversation that experts are having, I think it shows you like what is what our system is about. Shifting to the yay Tim Pool disaster, a lot of y'all figured that yay needs help. Though you had Amariani asking what a lot of people were thinking, saying, I have a very big problem with the I understand at 224. In yay's circumstance, they're coming after him. They're trying to take away his stuff. They're threatening him with institutionalization. And I understand all of that. And continuing, where the hell was this mentality when this was done to Britney Spears and to a lesser extent? Amanda Bynes, Lindsay Lohan, and other high profile female celebrities. If Ye were a woman, he would have been forced into a conservative ship years ago. If not after his first incident, 100% after the second. The double standard just absolutely infuriates me. And then, of course, there were just a lot of people that were shocked that Tim Pool was the same person in the room. Then, moving on, there was also discussion about Will Smith's apology. And there were, there were a lot of people that were cynical about it, saying things like, Will Smith isn't doing this to apologize. He's doing it to bring good press to his new project, was probably told to do so by the studio when signing the contract, and is doing it for promotion of said movie. Which I will say, I don't doubt that they're like the studio or certain people at a studio are like, this is gonna give us even more good press. Or even though he issued an apology before, this is him doing his first rounds. There's gonna be more attention, more technically than free promotion for the movie. But also, I, I did see a lot of people kind of agreeing with my take. People saying things like, Phil nailed exactly what I was thinking. It's not for me to forgive or condemn Will Smith because I'm not the person he slapped. You know, I agree with that, and I guess myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I also understand like it's it's a feeling thing. Like I feel that Will Smith is probably generally a decent human being that did a fucked up thing in a moment. I think there should be accountability there if he fucking slapped me, there, there would have been assault charges. But I do think that it was an outlier for it. Whereas then I saw people saying like Chris Brown's name, what's the difference there? My feelings, and I think it's backed up by <laughs> history and reality, is that he's just genuinely a bad person. A very violent individual with a track record. You can call it hypocrisy, but I think what happened between Will Smith and Chris Rock and what would happen, uh, what happened with Chris Brown and Rihanna, drastically different situations. I'm drawing that comparison because it's literally an argument I saw some people making. But hey, that's a story, some of our back and forth, and whether you agree or disagree with me, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below. And then, already online banner ads, sidebars, and pop-ups are everywhere, especially with the holidays here. Like whether it be a mainstream news site or less than legal torrent hubs. And most are colorful distractions, but some are malvertising ads created to infect your device with malware and viruses. And if you're asking, Phil, how can I block these dangerous sites? How can I have peace of mind for this problem that you just told me I have? Well, that is where our fantastic and sponsor of today's show, NordVPN, or more directly, nordvpn.com slash Phil comes in. Its hackers will create a convincing advert containing hidden lines of malicious code and find a way to feature their content on a legitimate website. When you click on the ad, you'll be directed to a dangerous server from which the rest of the attack will be launched. And with Nord's threat protection service, I can block dangerous sites and limit advertising, giving me a cleaner, safer browsing experience. Also, a healthy dose of skepticism will go a long way to keeping you secure. So help protect yourself from malvertising and head on over to nordvpn.com slash Phil to get a huge discount off a two-year plan and wait for it four months free. This is an incredible deal. Seriously. That's nordvpn.com slash Phil. It's all risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. And then Wednesday, I'll say definitely I noticed a trend whenever we cover community-based stories. Because right? you had the Smash community coming out in droves to talk about their frustrations with Nintendo. Watch it easily one of the most popular comments by simply saying, Nintendo somehow simultaneously makes some of the greatest games to this day while also acting as a perpetual enemy of freely enjoying video games and the advancement of them as a medium. And there were also plenty of takes that range from disappointment to confusion, but one of the biggest takeaways was that a 
lot of people wanted us to be sure that the head of Panda was sufficiently blamed. And actually on that note, Nintendo has come out and issued a statement about the entire situation. In it, they tried to clarify that they issued licenses solely based on the merits of the proposals they received, but with that also reiterating that organizers like Panda need to adhere to high standards of conduct and adding, it is also important that a partner adheres to brand and IP guidelines and conducts itself according to professional and organizational best practices. We use the same approach to independently assess all partners. If we discover that a partner is doing something inappropriate, we will work to correct it. So who knows, if large groups that were threatened by Panda come out with proof, it's possible that Nintendo will do something about it. Although, I, I don't know if there's a world where they're willing to risk an entire licensing deal this late into the year. Also, for its part, Panda largely denied any wrongdoing in a new statement on Friday. Which, side note, if there are updates to this story, uh, we filmed these on Friday. But there, uh, saying they were clarifying that it essentially removed its controversial CEO from working directly with other tournament organizers to avoid miscommunications. Leading to a general frustration from many creators, big and small, people like Moist Critical. Because right, right before this statement, he actually put out a video where he said, Still nothing from them. I feel like they should address it as quickly as possible. But I believe I heard from HBox that they're getting a very serious statement prepared with like a legal team and everything. And then after reading Panda's statement, he tweeted out, Yucky response, actually just dropped a nothing sandwich after two days. Don't really see how Panda moves on from this. And there are also hints from popular players signed with the group that they might leave. Also, a story that really connected with a lot of y'all was that Walmart situation. And if I had to guess, that's because nearly everyone at some point in their life spent time in purgatory. I mean, working retail, which can be a soul suck in general, but especially when management doesn't support you. With people like Mary Jane giving her experience, and I'll just use her words, as a Walmart employee, I hope this lawsuit makes them do more and reevaluate as a company. This isn't an isolated incident. There is a guy at my store who threatened gun violence against two of our coworkers, and all they did was move his shifts to the opposite time of day. And I feel like I'm working with a time bomb that Walmart could have diffused for us and have no recourse for that until it's too late. And then they shrug it off because they've quote trained us to be in a shooting, which I'll say it's hard to read or hear that and not go, what the fuck? Like, I just can't imagine a world where higher ups are like, you know what? Moving shifts around. That's an acceptable solution to someone threatening to shoot employees. Although Colin may have gotten to the bottom of why Walmart doesn't take threats of violence seriously, like with this most recent shooting, writing, the fact that Walmart called that a complaint tells you everything you need to know about how seriously they're taking it. But yeah, I mean, the general sentiment was that Walmart doesn't care about their employees. I have worked for Walmart for 10 years. They have never taken ethics reports seriously. And even worse, if you do report, there is a likely chance management could retaliate against you in some way. And then finally on Wednesday, I asked y'all who you would want for a game of the year, specifically Elden Ring or God of War Ragnarok. And as suspected, when I lit that fuse, there were many strong opinions on both sides. Elden Ring was praised for its open world design and accessibility for a Soulsborne game. And for some of you, the game literally cured your burnout of open world games. Although I think this comment kind of points to why Elden Ring seemed to be so much more popular. Saying being someone who has played and enjoyed both games, I can just tell from the online presence that Elden Ring has had a huge impact. God of War had a whimper and has seemingly been relegated to little clips on YouTube shorts. Meanwhile, ER smashed into the culture and popped off everywhere. But at the same time, it felt like there was almost just as many people who thought God of War deserved it. But there seemed to be a nostalgia factor for many of you alongside the game's storytelling. Which really, I mean, seems to have fundamentally changed a character into someone with far more depth, with one of you saying it was just so touching to see someone try to better themselves for their child, as well as other comments like it was simply like a love letter to all the growing and aging fans of the franchise. Had such deep roots in the message, no matter what you did or how life has treated you, you can change for the better. But either way, there is one thing for sure with this story, and that is that half of you are wrong. I just won't say which half, because I, uh, I'd like you guys fighting amongst yourselves and not with me. And then we've got Thursday, and there we talked about the ongoing Adderall shortage. And there we saw a number of responses, like there were a lot of people that didn't even know that this was going on, which not to pat ourselves on the back too much. That, that's one of my joys when we're able to do like a, an in-depth interview and bring light to something that's not getting a ton of coverage. We had people like Eddie is telling us about their experience navigating the shortage of someone newly diagnosed with ADHD, really just highlighting how much it affected their life, saying, I got diagnosed at 20 with ADHD and the Adderall shortage was hugely debilitating for the past two months. I'm in university and working full time, so my general productivity was a lot lower than usual. In order to combat this, I drank extremely high amounts of caffeine, but to no avail. Just got my prescription back this last two weeks and I'm finally catching back up on schoolwork, but it's really eye-opening to see how much it's positively affected my life. And the medication shortage is super frustrating. I haven't been on my medication and it's affected all aspects of my life. Especially close to big end-of-the-year deadlines, my mental health is now suffering at levels I haven't in a long time. And then I think James started a really good conversation when he said, the Adderall situation is absolute insanity. You can literally be scrolling through TikTok and constantly see ads that encourage getting a prescription for ADHD while their paid actor gives extremely generic reasoning like getting distracted. It's blatant predatory marketing and the fact that the end result is millions of people getting prescribed a schedule
Schedule II substance is just mental. The DEA needs to step in and crack down on these predatory companies who mass advertise ADHD with predatory tactics. They're getting millions of people who don't need the medication addicted to amphetamines. And below that, while, you know, the majority of the audience is U.S.-based, this is an international show, one of the most common responses was shock that people in the U.S. get direct-to-consumer medical marketing, which, in case you don't know, is a very uniquely American thing. But there, we also saw a lot of people pushing back, pointing out that the schedule of a drug doesn't always correspond with how dangerous it is, right? You look at marijuana. Although I think amphetamines are more likely to be abused than weed. But yeah, you know, if there was a large-scale crackdown, it could actually end up hurting people who need Adderall the most. Then, moving on to the Twitch Shield story, right? The, the situation where Twitch gave a tool to creators to try and stop hate raids. There, the general sentiment was that it seems to be a viable solution that creators have control over. With Mario saying, I feel like it's a great idea. To be able to quickly toggle on sub-only chat or quickly ban based on a phrase could be hugely effective for raids like that. They don't have to limit their regular day-to-day -day streams in one way or another in fear of hate raids and limit their growth slash exposure. With Gamersaps adding, on the Twitch thing, I don't get people going, you did the bare minimum. This seems to be a very good tool and we've already had tools to deal with them to a certain extent before. They just weren't ideal or as well made like this. Yes, ask for them to make better tools like they have, but when they have already made these tools, give actual complaints about the tool if it isn't working as it's intended, not just dismiss the effort outright. And then of course, finally we had uh, just the disgusting, hateful rhetoric from Kanye, him talking about how he loves Nazis and Hitler while speaking to Alex Jones. And there, you know, just like me, most of you were shocked that Jones ended up looking like the fucking normal one in that interview. Also, uh, do not let that wash away how much of an insane asshole he is. Not jumping on the I also love Hitler and Nazis bandwagon. Very fucking low bar, like under the ground low. But yeah, he was a fucking deer in headlights while Kanye was just saying ridiculous things. So also, I don't know what he expected. He's hanging out with a Nick Nazi Fuentes. You know, one of the main comments kind of was just having more questions, right? Someone writing, I got so many of them. Why why is Kanye wearing a mask? Is that really him saying it? If so, who found it out it was him? That story happened so fast, I need the source. Which, hey, I I'm all for fact checking, but it sounds like you are going to need to be in the room and directly talk to everyone involved in a story to believe something, even when everyone involved in the story says that it happened. Stay skeptical, but not everything's a conspiracy theory. And something that I heard recently that I really loved was be open minded, but not so much that your brain falls out. That's how you get the Kanye itis. Which, by the way, and I don't know if it's going to change by the time this video goes up, uh, Kanye has been booted off of Twitter again, with Elon promising it's not because he posted a photo of him looking overweight, but rather the everything else that's been happening. But then finally, the, the last thing I want to mention in today's show, earlier this week I joked about uh, turning 43, I'm actually 37, which also means that some of you have watched me for almost half of my life. I started a version of this show back in college, I've done a decent version of it for the past four years. I just wanted to genuinely take a second to say, whether you've been with me for the long haul or you're new here, and hopefully you'll be in the long haul from here, Thanks for being a part of this. It started as a, an experiment by a, a lazy lost boy, and it is an honor and a privilege not only to be in your phone, in your home, wherever you're watching, but to for us to have turned into the men and women we are today together. And I like to think we're both better for it. So that's where I'm going to leave you. I'll be right back here on this channel tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday with your regular Philip DeFranco show. But until then, I love yo faces. You're doing a good job, and I'll see you tomorrow.